This week we're going over hand x-rays. We're going to include finger and thumb. Review your hand anatomy. Hand protocol. When you get an order for a hand, it will say left or right hand. Okay, we're going to do a PA hand. PA oblique at a 45 degree angle and fan lateral. We may use a straight lateral in trauma situations. These are some examples of technical factors. You can see the difference between CR and DR. And just um, memorize a range there for me. PA hand, where's your central ray? The third MCP joint. Marker goes on lateral border. And then you're gonna use your lead arrow to identify the site of pain. So when you're taking your patient history is there an area that hurts the most? And you'll point with your arrow to that finger. If the pain is on the top of the hand or the palm, then we'll save the arrow for a lateral position. Right? Try to make sure the wrist and forearm are on the same plane as the hand. Try to not have the hand come in at an angle. Don't put the thumb out too far and watch your shadows of light coming around your fingers here. How do you evaluate your image? Are all of your fingers on? Is your hand out straight and not rotated? Ideally, our markers need to be on lateral border. The oblique hand, if you don't have a, a sponge like we do, we don't have a lot of these step wedges. So we just place the hand in a 45 degree oblique, separate the fingers a little bit, marker on lateral border, 45 degrees. Centering to third, MCP. Essentially, you're going to have these three knuckle areas superimposed over each other. Ideally, you have the fingers slightly separated. The joints are open. Fan lateral. I ask my patient to make an OK sign. And then I place them lateral on the board and separate their finger and thumb at last minute. This may be difficult for your elderly patients or patients with arthritis. If you have a support sponge like they do in this picture up here, um, you can use that. And sometimes we'll have to use tape to sort of separate the fingers a little bit or um, a gauze wrapped around. Mm -hmm. How do you evaluate lateral hand? Ideally, you want these metacarpals superimposed. You want to be able to visualize all of the fingers separately. Make sure you don't cut anything off with your shadows of light. This is a straight lateral, or some people call it, a, call it a karate chop. Hand out straight with thumb out. This may be used for trauma situations or if they're looking for a foreign body. You can see there's a BB in this patient's um, soft tissue here. What will it look like? This is what it's going to look like. We only use that if we can't get a fan lateral. In your text, it identifies an extension and flexion version of hand laterals. We don't use this often in our clinical site, but that is in your textbook. Finger protocol. For us, if, they, if you get an order for a finger, you're automatically going to do a PA hand and include all the fingers for your first view. Your second view will be an oblique of the affected finger, collimated to that finger, and then a lateral of the affected finger. You're going to use your arrow to identify a site of pain or injury. So PA fingers, here are some examples from your textbook. We do a full hand, but your textbook specifies a PA finger. So for textbook and for boards, this is what you'll need to retain. PA finger, you're going to center to the pip, the proximal interphalangeal joint of the specified finger. If you do just a finger, this is what it should look like, PA finger. We do a full hand. The oblique of the specified finger, put your hand into that 45 oblique hand, and then you're simply going to collimate your light field to the finger specified. You can see how they use a support sponge here. You might need to utilize tape to separate out the other fingers, still centering to the proximal interphalangeal joint, and it's still a 45 degree oblique. What will this look like? We're going to see the finger in a 45 degree the other finger is not superimposed over it. Lateral fingers. Ideally, it's the least OID. So for the second finger, you can see here, they made a fist. They took the second finger, flipped that hand around, so the second finger is closest to the image receptor. 
for all the other fingers, you can keep the hand in lateral position and you may utilize sponges to help the patient hold the finger in lateral position and away from the other fingers as you can see they're utilizing here. Ideally, it will be in lateral position. The joints will be open. In this image, they're using a pen to press in or um, something, a sharper object. You can see the soft tissue is being pressed in. We use sponges to prevent that situation. Thumb. If you get an order for a thumb, obviously it's going to be right or left thumb, but we automatically do a hand at clinical to include all the fingers, obviously, and the thumb. When your hand is in a PA hand position, your thumb is in an oblique. So the PA hand is your oblique view of a thumb. We're going to take a lateral thumb image and an AP thumb. If they can't do an AP thumb, we'll do a PA. Again, use your arrow. We do a full hand at clinical, but your textbook identifies an oblique code down to the thumb and you're centering to the MCP. This is what it will look like. Your thumb will be in oblique position, 45 degrees. The joints will only be partially open because you're at an oblique. There's a sesamoid bone here. And your, um, you can see the CMC joint here. AP thumb, this is your AP thumb. You're going to rotate the hand so the posterior portion of the thumb is touching the imaging plate. You're going to bring the hand away, have them pull the fingers away so they're not superimposing over the thumb. Again, MCP joint. If they can't do that, say a trauma situation and the patient is unable to rotate their hand that way, you may utilize a PA thumb. It will just have increased OID, and that's why it's not preferred. But if that's what your patient can do, then that's what we'll do. And this is what it will look like here. Lateral thumb. I tend to have the patient make a fist, or you can have the fingers out, but you're going to bring the thumb into simply a lateral position. And again, centering MCP. The entire thumb you want included. Trauma terminology. So some terminology I want you to know. Dislocation, displacement from joint, subluxation, which is a partial dislocation, sprain, rupture or tearing of connective tissue, contusion, bruise without a fracture. Review your fracture terminology. Uh, simple or closed fracture. Compound or open fractures is when it breaks through the skin. Comminuted fracture, splinter or crushed, and impacted fracture. The fragments are driven into each other. Four types of hand fractures. So displaced is when the bone breaks in two or more pieces and it becomes misaligned. There's an obvious separation. Non-displaced is when the bone cracks or breaks but doesn't move and it maintains the alignment. Comminuted is when it's in several pieces and open fracture is when the bone breaks through the skin. An example of some fractures here, this fracture of the fifth metacarpal, we refer to as a boxer's fracture. They punch something that's a common one for hand. Your patient may have something called rheumatoid arthritis, and the bones tend to erode. The patients that have rheumatoid arthritis may struggle with some of your positioning due to the fact that they have limited range of motion depending on the severity of it. Snowblower injury, every winter we have a patient who sticks their hand in a snowblower. They may send you their fingers separately to x-ray. Positioning considerations. You know by now with our extremities, we're at 40 inches SID. We're going to do gonadal shielding. You're going to collimate to the part, long axis of the part. We're going, you know how I like you to be in the center of that imaging plate. Side marker, ideally on the lateral border, and then you're going to use your lead arrow to identify site of pain whenever possible. Make sure the patient's upper limb is on the same plane. What does that mean? Remember, I want that patient arm, that wrist, forearm, elbow, hand on the same plane. I don't want them at a funky angle. Sit them down, bring the table up to their height, try and separate the fingers, remove their rings if possible, if they have a bracelet, anything in the way. If the splint can be removed, then do so. 
if they have a cast on, you're going to want to increase exposure factors. I want you to look at these two images and critique them quickly with me. So first on this side, we have a left hand. What do we think about positional wise, collimation wise, marker? Right away, looking at this one on the left, you guys can tell that the, the wrist, the forearm and elbow are off at an angle here. It's coming off at an angle and they're not straight aligned. So it's gonna actually distort the wrist bones here. There's no arrow identifying site of pain, so it, they might have hurt all over, something like that. But tuck that elbow in closer to the body. Going over on the right side, looking at this right one here, this right marker should be on the lateral border of the image. And then again, what's my pet peeve? This crooked forearm wrist situation. Tuck the elbow in so it's straight. Know your anatomy. All catchers. We don't do this view often at the clinical site. Some of your off sites might utilize it more than we do. Um, we call it a ball catchers or Norgard's view. The hands are in AP position and actually at an AP oblique as if they're outstretched ready to catch a ball. This view we're looking for rheumatoid arthritis specifically and they're looking for some early erosion at the base corners of the proximal phalanges. Your off-sites might do these more than we do, but that is what your ball catcher's view is, and it's for rheumatoid arthritis, so remember that one. Pediatric bone age, you might see at the clinical site, technologists take simply one image of a pediatric patient for bone age. We at our site do left hand and wrist, on pediatric patients. These are done for children that have either advanced or delayed growth. And then the radi radiologist will measure their bones and evaluate the maturity of the child's skeleton and put them on a chart and sort of age them depending on the size of their bones. And that's it.